Gita. In fact, the concluding message of Bhagavad Gita is Krishna's instruction to Arjuna to set aside all other principles that he's previously presented and just take this one as the primary, fundamental, essential principle and everything will be nice. Just do this one thing. And so, um, most of you at least have seen me around here and there for some time, but you don't know Dravida Prabhu unless you've been here for the weekend or past time that he's visited us. Dravida Prabhu is um, we, we've known each other for years and years and years. Um, he, for many years, the service that Dravida Prabhu has been doing is working with the Bhaktivedanta Book Trust that publishes all of Srila Prabhupada's writings. And he's been one of their principal editors, very highly technical, intellectual skills required. <laughs> and a uh, very responsible service because these are the, the teachings of our founder Acharya and the specific, you know, where the commas go and should this word or that word be used, etc. That's what his service has been. Those of you that know, know what the Vyasa Puja book is, he edits the entire Vyasa Puja book, this young man over here. He's a very important person in our Hare Krishna movement and he's going to share with you um, the message of Bhagavad Gita 1866 where Krishna speaks about surrender. And look at that, there's the verse right on the screen. Yes, we do call and response As you wish. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Sarva Dharman Parityajya Sarva Dharman Parityajya Mami Kam Sharanam Vraja Mami Kam Sharanam Vraja Aham Tvam Sarva Pape Bhyo Aham Tvam Sarva Pape Bhyo Moksha Yusyami Mahasucha Ha Moksha Yusyami Mahasucha Ha Translation, Lord Krishna says to Arjuna, Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. Srila Prabhupada's purport. The Lord has described various kinds of knowledge and processes of religion. Knowledge of the Supreme Brahman. Knowledge of the Super Soul. Knowledge of the different types of orders and statuses of social life. Knowledge of the renounced order of life. Knowledge of non-attachment, sense and mind control, meditation, etc. He has described in so many ways different types of religion. Now, in summarizing the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says that Arjun should give up all the processes that have been explained to him. He should simply surrender to Krishna. That surrender will save him from all kinds of sinful reactions, for the Lord personally promises to protect him. In the seventh chapter, it was said that only one who has become free from all sinful reactions can take to the worship of Lord Krishna. Thus, one may think that unless he is free from all sinful reactions, he cannot take to the surrendering process. To such doubts, it is here said that even if one is not free from all sinful reactions, simply by the process of surrendering to Sri Krishna, he is automatically freed. There is no need of strenuous effort to free oneself from sinful reactions. One should unhesitatingly accept Krishna as the supreme savior of all living entities. With faith and love, one should surrender unto him. The process of surrender to Krishna is described in the Hari Bhakti Vilas 11676. And I think we had this verse yes, up. It's up. Coming it's up. Next. Oh. Next. Anukulyasa Sankalpa. Pratikulyasya Varjanam Rakshishyati Ti Vishvaso Goptrit Vevadanam Tatha Atmanikshepa Karpanye 
Shabbidha Shadanagiti. According to the devotional process, one should simply accept such religious principles that will lead ultimately to the devotional service of the Lord. One may perform a particular occupational duty according to his position in the social order, but if by executing his duty one does not come to the point of Krishna consciousness, all his activities are in vain. Anything that, do that does not lead to the perfectional stage of Krishna consciousness should be avoided. One should be confident that in all circumstances, Krishna will protect him from all difficulties. There is no need of thinking how one should keep the body and soul together. Krishna will see to that. One should always think himself helpless and should consider Krishna the only basis for his progress in life. As soon as one seriously engages himself in devotional service to the Lord in full Krishna consciousness, at once he becomes freed from all contamination of material nature. There are different processes of religion and purificatory processes by cultivation of knowledge, meditation in the mystic yoga system, etc. But one who surrenders unto Krishna does not have to execute so many methods. That simple surrender unto Krishna will save him from unnecessarily wasting time. One can thus make all progress at once and be freed from all sinful reactions. One should be attracted to the beautiful vision of Krishna. His name is Krishna because he is all attractive. One who becomes attracted by the beautiful, all-powerful, omnipotent vision of Krishna is fortunate. There are different kinds of transcendentalists. Some of them are attached to the impersonal Brahman vision. Some of them are attracted by the super-soul feature, etc. But one who is attracted to the personal feature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and above all, one who is attracted by the Supreme Personality of Godhead as Krishna himself, is the most perfect transcendentalist. In other words, devotional service to Krishna in full consciousness is the most confidential part of knowledge. And this is the essence of the whole Bhagavad Gita. Karma yogis, empiric philosophers, mystics, and devotees are all called transcendentalists. But one who is a pure devotee is the best of all. The particular words used here, ma shuchaha, do, don't fear, don't hesitate, don't worry, are very significant. One may be perplexed as to how one can give up all kinds of religious forms and simply surrender unto Krishna, but such worry is useless. Om jnana tamarandasya jnananjana shalakaya chakshu unmilatam mena tasmai shri gurave namaha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. So as Srila Prabhupada mentions, this is the es essential teaching of the Bhagavad, of the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, this very word sharanam is used here, meaning to surrender. And in the purport, Srila Prabhupada quotes the very verse which formed the uh, basis of our exploration of this process of surrender during this weekend retreat. So there are some uh, assumptions here. This is a Sunday feast. Some people may be here for the first time. Uh, the idea of being released from sinful reactions is a central uh, idea in the Vedic culture in general. And in the uh, Bhagavad Gita, especially in the third chapter, when he's talking about karma yoga, this is a very prominent idea. Is that, first of all, this is, our, this is not our only life. We're eternal as spirit souls. And from previous our previous life or lives, we have residual reactions to activities we performed. And those are what f uh, uh, constitute our destiny or form our destiny in this lifetime. We, we uh, enjoy a certain amount of things, we suffer a certain amount of uh, pains, and this is all because of things we have did in previous lives and in this life. So uh, the only way we can attain liberation from this bondage of karma, which means birth and death, old age, disease, again and again, is to uh, get rid of our karma reactions. Uh, but this is not uh, 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 really possible to do outside of devotional service. Because any activity that's fruitive, even if it's very pious activity, will still mean that you have to come back again in the next life to receive the merit that you won by that activity. So we're very much entangled. This is explained nicely in the 15th chapter. It's a big banyan tree with many branches and leaves. So here Krishna is saying, all that I've spoken before about getting free of that uh, bondage, 
Just do this one thing and it's all taken care of. You don't have to worry about acting in a certain way to, to counteract previous activities. Everything will be taken care of by this process of surrender. So it's important to understand what does that actually mean? Uh, in, in English, this, this has kind of a little bit of a connotation. You know, when you think of surrender, do you think of the, uh, you know, the Japanese surrendering to the Americans on the ship? And it's like, it's not very, I don't want to surrender. You know, I mean, I have my own life to live, right? But actually, this word sharanam means not surrendering, but also taking shelter. Taking shelter of. This is why we have an ashram. It's the same root of sh ashram, sharanam, like that. So what does this actually mean? In the previous verse, Krishna gave us some details about what that surrender means. Manmana bhavamadbhakto madjaji mam namaskaru. He's saying these four essential processes, which he repeats from the ninth chapter. Think of me, become my devotee, bow down to me, and offer your homage and worship unto me. If you practice these processes, then uh, I promise you, you're my very, very dear friend, you will certainly come to me. And coming to Krishna in the spiritual world means much more than getting free of sinful reactions. It means the perfection of life. So these two verses go together. Give up all these other activities I told you about. They're, they're important as long as we are not, uh, in, uh, have not taken up pure devotion. But perform this one activity of surrender and everything will be taken care of. You'll be free of sinful reaction and you'll attain the perfection of life uh, going back home, back to Godhead. So we're just going to uh, review quickly what these, these, these uh, six are, and then we'll explore uh, individually. So this has been an analyzed by our acharyas into six different uh, stages or steps, um, elements. Anukulyasa sankalpa. This means to accept things that are favorable for devotional service. For instance, uh, just coming here is a, is a huge favorable step for devotional service. Coming to this place, this temple at this time, rather than a hundred billion other places you could be, means that you'll be with the deities, the holy name, you'll hear the, 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 uh, the, the Bhagavad Gita. So this is the first step, but there are many others. For instance, chanting Hare Krishna. You come together to hear the, the chanting, and if you begin to chant in the kirtan, this is a, a tremendous uh, step forward, acceptance. There's a million other things you could be chanting and saying at that time. So, and many other things that you accept, you can learn from the books and from the devotees uh, what those uh, steps are. And at the same time, there are things that we give up that are impediments. Uh, the famous four regular principles, uh, these are impediments to our devotional life because they keep us very powerfully tied to the uh, material concept of life, bodily concept of life. So, accepting what's favorable Rejecting what's unfavorable. Now, this is true in every sphere of life. Suppose you want, you're in college and you're looking to get a degree in medicine or something. There are so many things you need to accept. You need to apply, and then if you're accepted, you need to come up with the, with the, with the tuition, right? And then all along the way, you need to apply your, your mind to it, take the tests, all of these things. That means that you can't be partying all the time, right? You, you have to throw discipline. So every field of endeavor involves accepting the things favorable and rejecting unfavorable. And, and bhakti yoga is no different. Finding out what they are and actually doing that is a very important part of surrender. Now, uh, at the same time, from the philosophy and from association, from, from hearing, we understand that Krishna is actually in charge of everything. He is the, 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 the master of this universe, of all the energies. So that means that uh, uh, one of our main processes in material life is to get some protection, right? Even just, uh, this is the warmest it's ever been than, I, than when I've been here in Chicago, right? Probably the warmest you've experienced in a long time. But, uh, but normally it's very cold. You have to have protection. You have to have a building. You need to have heat. You have to have warm clothes. This is called arrangements for our protection. Now here Krishna, uh, uh, it is said that one of the processes to do, rely on Krishna for uh, one's protection, to see that he will protect me. Now, it doesn't mean that we then simply say, oh, I'm just going to go outside with a, with a, a T-shirt on when it's uh, zero degrees in Chicago. You know, that's foolishness. But we see that for Krishna, we protect his body, you see, and we, do, and, and, and we rely on him understanding 
that everything that we have for our protection is actually coming from him. Where, where, where these, these, uh, the, the materials come from for the building, the intelligence to build it. All these things are actually coming from Krishna. So understanding that Krishna is our protector and also our provider. There's two things you need, yoga and shema. Yoga are the necessities of life and shema in Sanskrit means welfare and protection. So Krishna says in the ninth chapter, if you think of me, surrender to me and worship me, I personally carry your yoga and shema. I, I provide you with the necessities of life and give you protection. Now, we have, the time is limited, we can't go in, but there's so many examples uh, in ancient history and in modern history. Our, our, uh, one, our you know, glorious uh, founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada, uh, he got on a boat in September of 1965 with no money, no friends, basically, in, in, in age 69, with uh, ill health, to go spread this movement in Krishna, uh, to, the, to the Western world. Incredibly courageous activity, completely relying on Krishna for protection and for maintenance. This is an example of full surrender. And see what happened. Yes, there were some difficulties, but he was protected, he was provided for, and he, and he planted the seeds of this movement, and it's grown worldwide. And, and so that's the perfect example. And we have so many others throughout the history of uh, uh, Krishna consciousness, where devotees rely on Krishna, and he protects them, and he, and he provides. So how to do that, that requires guidance. But still, this is a central principle, uh, these two principles. And then the final two, are Atma Nikshepa and Karpanye. Now Atma Nikshepa is non different from what we call Atma Nivedanam, which means full surrender. It means simply relying on the Lord, not having any desire different from, the, from, from Krishna. Now this is a very advanced state to come to. But, it, but it's just like a child dependent on its parents. You know? Child doesn't worry. Oh, my father will protect me, my mother will protect me, they'll provide for me. You see, this is the, the, the mood. And we see the great devotees had that. We just heard this morning about Ambarish, great, great king, who was so advanced, he was so absorbed in Krishna consciousness that even though he was threatened with uh, annihilation by a fiery demon, uh, he didn't flinch. He simply relied on Krishna. If Krishna wants me to perish, I'll perish. I'll simply think of him. And he was protected. So there's many uh, accounts like that. And uh, then finally, ma maintaining one's uh, sense of humility being uh, humble. And that, if you, if you study the science of Krishna consciousness and you understand how helpless we really are and insignificant, where the, the, the disease, the material disease is called a false ego, having a false pride in one's bodily strength and one's position, one's, certainly one's economic strength. But these are all very ephemeral. They're very temporary. And at any moment, they can be destroyed. We saw in 2007, 2008, People thought they were secure, you know. Trillions of dollars were wiped away. Suddenly, those who thought they were in good shape were, were not. And so many, it's, a, it's a crisis, right? It's still going on, right? So where is there any security in this world? The only security is the foundation of the Supreme Spirit, is Krishna. Just like the sun and the sunshine. We're particles of sun. We for, uh, we for, sunshine, we've forgotten the Supreme Sun. So Krishna really is the, 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 the foundation of everything. And he, he responds to his devotees. This is the thing. That if you really feel dependent and you act in that, that relationship with him, he provides. You don't know how it's happening, but it's happening. So these six uh, limbs of surrender, they're an essential uh, part of devotional service. They really constitute the heart of what it means to be uh, a, a Krishna conscious person. It means to re begin to connect again and see that relationship with Krishna as uh, he's, he's the master, he's also our friend, our best well-wisher. And if we engage in devotional service with him, beginning with chanting the holy name, then we can enter onto this path of, of, of surrender. It's not something that happens automatically or all at once, but really the development of this uh, uh, mood of surrender to Krishna uh, really constitutes the essential aspect of devotional service. So I'm going to let Maharaj continue and we can have a discussion, if you like. He's pretty much covered everything. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> I'm sorry, I was, I was supposed to no, do it's four. Okay. And, uh, no, it's okay. <laughs> uh, I, I think I'll start at the bottom and work up. Like, starting here, this, this item, humility, I, I think I'll just add two things out, out of the whole 
presentation. One is this item of humility, according to uh, one of our great acharyas. So of course, Prabhupada is our founder acharya. But his spiritual master, Bhakti Siddhanta, for those of you that are new, they're also on the altar on the left side. There's Prabhupada, and next to him is Bhakti Siddhanta, Murti of Bhakti Siddhanta. And Bhakti Siddhanta's father was also a very great, great acharya, uh, wrote many, many books, 100 books. Try writing a book sometime. 100 books out of sight. And all very elevated devotional writings, and one of those was songs describing these six limbs of surrender and he places first in these six like how to begin the process of surrender is the humility item um, in in humility in his songs making it really simple he takes stock of his life and looking at his life he um, describes how he has wasted his time. This and that and that and the other thing and as Dravida Prabhu said, ephemeral, it's, it's all past and now my life has slipped through my fingers, there's nothing left of it. I'm at the fag end of my life and I still don't know who I am. I'm deluded and bewildered and lost and confused and I wish to take shelter of you. So this position of, if, if we're honest, is it, honest is a nice quality, if we're honest with ourselves, there's no, there's no safety or no shelter in things that are impermanent. And so he wishes to take shelter of the permanent. This is a very basic teaching of Bhagavad Gita. Nasate vijate bhavo na bhavo vijate sataha. Those who are tattva darshis, those that are, that are seers of the truth, they make a very clear distinction between things that are temporary, asat, and things that are permanent, or sat, and they don't invest in asat. They invest their attention and consciousness and life energy in things that are eternal. Yes, we take care of necessities of the temporary side of life, the body and mind, and we invest time and energy in the eternal, the, the ultimate mission or purpose of life. That's what we do. That's our interest. So um, there's a little additional point to what Dravidra Prabhu said. This humility is, is essential before one can surrender, if one is Without humility, who's going to surrender? Recognizing our, the factual circumstance of our life, we need some assistance to go beyond our own limitations. And that's a transcendental place or transcendental person that we need assistance from. And one other point, and that is this item number four listed here, acceptance of the Lord as one's guardian or master. We spent some time discussing one of our um, great, another great acharya prior to Bhaktivinoda Thakur, just following the line of Lord, Lord Chaitanya, was Jiva Goswami, and he explained this one of the six is primary, and the other five are secondary following the primary. That is to say, um, of course, this isn't going to happen without humility, but there's, when we're looking for strength and safety and shelter, there's someone who's qualified to offer that safety and strength and shelter, and that person singularly is Krishna, just as the, the Bhagavad Gita uh, indicates, the, the verse that we is recited together. Mam ekam shananam. Navida spoke about the word shananam as surrender or shelter, like ashram is a place where you, uh, the, 
where our devotees stay, whether it's married people live in their home, the grahasta ashram, or the young students, they live in the brahmachari ashram. Ashram means a, a place of spiritual shelter. But Krishna is indicating that place of spiritual shelter is mam, it's first person singular, him, me, mam ekam, ekam means one, me alone, take shelter of me alone, take shelter of Krishna alone. Uh, one of the teachings found in Nectar of Devotion, very nice teaching, I like, love is exclusive. Love means you repose that tendency for love upon the beloved. And fortunately, Krishna is the source of everything and everyone. So if you repose tendency of love upon Krishna, then automatically it follows that love towards others will be included by that love towards Krishna. It's a nice teaching, isn't it? I remember growing up in, in uh, as a young Christian boy in uh, part of what we did. Sim many traditions have something similar. When you turn 13 or you hit your teens, there's this confirmation class. You know, when you're young, you're baptized, you don't know anything. It's just someone sprinkling water on your head and you get, you're baptized. Then when you can, you're, you turn a teenager, you're making some decisions. Do you want to continue in this life? That's what they call it confirmation class. So one of the things that I struggled with, I can remember very clearly, is the, the teaching, right on this topic, the teaching that um, Christ gave of the, of the teachings that he gave, he said there's two outstanding. He was asked, what's the most important thing out of all the things that you've taught us? His principal disciples were asking. And the two were love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the second is to love God, love your neighbor as yourself. And I really struggle with the second one because I found lots of people aren't very lovable. <laughs> but it's something we're supposed to do. Love your neighbor as yourself. So I, and I, and any, anyone I asked, how did, you know, how are you supposed to do this? I didn't get a, I didn't get a nice answer. I didn't get a satisfying answer. I got, I got platitudes, but no answer, nothing really meaningful. And when I became a devotee, a Krishna devotee, I could understand two things. One is, first comes before second. First come to the position of loving God with all their heart, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. And then, because living entities are connected to Krishna, then you love them. Then the second one that I didn't understand is you're not this body. The, what's lovable about another person is the fact that they're connected to Krishna. And especially those who are devoted to Krishna, they're especially lovable because they're carrying devotion for Krishna in their heart. But if you see in terms of the body, it's a big problem. Because things on the bodily platform, you have, there's likes and dislikes and there's bad behavior, but bad behavior isn't the person. Good behavior isn't the person. Behavior isn't the person. The person is the soul within. It's the soul within that's part and parcel of Krishna. So if you give your love to Krishna, then love of souls, plural, naturally follows. It's love is exclusive at the same time inclusive. It's very magical. Transcendentally delightful. So be, for surrender to take place, the other limbs of surrender will advance or follow behind this acceptance of the Lord as one's guardian or master. And one of the, the teachings given, and I'm gonna end with this, one of the teachings given connected with that is um, the full self-surrender, that is to say, thinking that one can accomplish something independently, independent of Krishna. You know, the doership mentality. I'm gonna do it. And we all know that one. We got trained up doing it with that mentality. 
accomplish, achieve. You're good, like, you know, go to school. You can get good grades, just apply yourself. Ask any kid. You hear it, right? Of course, we all did. And you know, it, it, we're trained up with that false ego consciousness. You know, get pumped up and pumped up and pumped up, at some point you explode. <laughs> It's illusion. It's not, it's not transcendental reality. There is a transcendental reality. Dravid explained it very nicely. It's not like we just wait for Krishna to maintain us and protect us. We do things. But we understand ultimately we're dependent upon Krishna to protect us, maintain us. And in our, our lives of doing things, we're doing in the position of dependence upon Krishna. We're his servant and he's the master. And from this one, all of the other elements of surrender follow. It's something like the point of a needle and then the shaft of a needle. And Krishna is pushing on the, the, the head. And you know, what comes on this end is our accepting Krishna as our master. And then t taking shelter of him, being engaged in his loving service. So this is the topic that we've been speaking about this weekend. And uh, you, the, the recordings are, are posted on the, the temple website, yes? Yes? So if you missed and would like to catch up, then we invite you to listen to the recordings. Some of the PowerPoint presentations, at least mine, I've made available and they'll also, as you can see and hear and it's not the same as being in the kirtan in front of the deities with all of the nice devotees assembled in the temple room. That was, that's always very special. But in, in your home, when you get there, over the week is coming up, you can try to listen. And uh, most important, apply the principles that you've understood. That's where real advancement comes. You hear, and then you apply what you've heard. You act in knowledge, and you get, something happens. You get realization. We were discussing these points also. So we invite you all. Hare Krishna. So any comments besides that little child over there? <laughs> or questions? Yes. For money. Over right here, bro. Hare Krishna, thank you both. Um, I want to see Krishna. Krishna wants to see you. I want to see. <laughs> there he is. It seems like. No, I mean, in an animated sense. What do I have to do to get to that point? Well, there's a verse. There's a verse for everything, actually. <laughs> and this verse, Prabhupada would often quote, in fact, it's quoted in the Bhagavad Gita, it's in a purport. Atakshi Krishna namadi namave grayam indriyai sevan mukhe hijivado swayam eva sporatyadaha With our present senses, we cannot grasp, we cannot see. The word grayam is like, very, almost like English. Gra understand, perceive um, the true reality of the name, form, qualities of Krishna. Because we're, it's covered, we're trying to uh, see through a dark glass or the, the, the example is the heart is covered with dust. You know, Cheto Dharpana Marjana. But, if despite the fact that we can't perceive directly, we begin service beginning with the tongue, chanting Hare Krishna, tasting prasadam, then we, and we follow the path to purification, then Krishna will uh, reveal himself to us. And there's a, a more dramatic uh, expression of this idea in the, in the Brahma Samhita. Premanjana chudita bhakti velochanena sandak sadaiva dhyesha veloka yanti yang shyama sundana machincha guna sarupam govindamari purushamtam aham bhajami. So Lord Brahma is saying, Lord Brahma who has had darshan of Krishna, 
Um, but he's expressing the, all of these truths in his Brahma Samhita. And he's saying, I worship Govinda, Krishna, the primeval Lord. One who has uh, uh, covered his eyes, has, has applied his eyes to the, with the uh, love of God ointment, prema anjana, chudita bhakti balochanena. With those eyes, he can always see Krishna in his heart, the shaima sundar form, the threefold bending form that we see. So it's the development of love for Krishna that Krishna responds to and reveals himself proportionately. You can't storm the battlements. You can't, you can't, there's no microscope, no telescope, no, not, no drug you can take that, <laughs> that Krishna will suddenly be revealed to you. Although we, we thought that in the 60s, but it doesn't happen. <laughs> he only responds, he only responds to one thing, and that's loving devotion. So, it, so the defect is in us, it's not in Krishna. He's everywhere. And one of the things I wanted to mention, Maharaj was so nicely talking about how, uh, you know, you can love everyone by loving Krishna. Yeah. And what is really lovable? Now, we, you, know, in our, in our, you know, without love, there's, there's no life. You know, and, and if you have a child who, who is separated from his parents and he grows up without that loving care of the mother, the child will be, you know, mentally disturbed. I mean, there has to be that. And throughout our lives, what makes life living is loving uh, relationships. Friends, parents, uh, husband, wife, children. So, but what is it that's lovable? It's not just the body. When you think, what is the body made of? It's not the body. It's, it's the soul, it's the, the, the conscious person expressing through the body. And, but the, but... So what's really lovable is that soul. And what's lovable about the soul is, is because it's part and parcel of Krishna. Whatever we find attractive in others is really uh, uh, attractive, is part of, a little particle of Krishna's attraction. Mm. So when, when we, we start developing our Krishna consciousness and we see, there's so many instructions in Bhagavad Gita, see everyone equally, see them as spirit, don't see the externals, right? So that's when you can really see uh, Krishna reflected in everyone because everyone is a spirit soul. And you're not even just human beings, plants, animals, everything. There's a, there's a spark of Krishna there. And Prabhupada, beautifully, I recommend so much this preface to the nectar of devotion. Prabhupada talks about love uh, is like a, a vibration. And it begins, we don't, we don't know where it ends. We know it starts with our parents, friends, family, but we don't know where it ends. So when it's expanded to its ultimate degree, it means love for Krishna, and then everyone, that's how universal love can be had. And is that needed in this world? This world, there's so much strife. There's so much hatred and anger and violence going on, exactly because of a lack of Krishna consciousness. And you see that when, when you, you know, in a in community of devotees, there's real care for others. There's, there's, uh, there's, uh, you, you don't see this hatred. You don't see the, any of this. It's, it's just, uh, uh, that's real life. And that's the only hope for this world. All right, I'm sorry. I'm going to get Good. carried away. You're doing great. Keep going. <laughs> Krishna's carrying. In my own devotion, the first two I seem to have the most problem with because in, in those things that are acceptable to God, I don't want to get into a legalism of worshiping them before God. And how do you dodge that legalism of saying, I have to be this kind of person? To me, it cuts off the love that I have and my power of devotion to God. So how can I, how do you really know, when do you start knowing when you're worshiping those things that seem favorable and not worshiping the deity behind those things? That question was asked, this, this, we had a question answer session. Language was different, but the essence of the question was the same. Uh, you, know, you said what you, what, you, what you want is to be in that relationship of love with the person behind the things and not just the things. So you know, the, the specific question is how do we not worship the things and instead worship the person behind the things? So that's why this number four is actually of the six, it's that the, the Sanskrit term is angi, and the other are angas. It's the principal limb, and the others are limbs that come from the principal limb. It's the root from which the, the plant grows. So when the root is there, the plant will grow. 
when there's that, so what's, what's the impetus? One of our classes was, what's the impetus? Krishna is so nice. Krishna is so nice. And when one understands how nice Krishna is, I want to, I want to be with Krishna. And if, if, if I know this is going to make Krishna happy, Krishna will smile, I want to do that. And if, if this other thing is going to block my vision of Krishna because I took shelter of this other thing that's, you know, darkness and clouds and the sunlight doesn't come through, then I don't want to do that thing. So it's the, it's the relationship with the person, not the thing. We put, you know, the cart before the horse. Not, excuse me, the horse before the cart. <laughs> the horse before the cart. Kishore, Kishori, Ki. You want to add to that? Yeah. Um, we have a very good example of surrender in the Bhagavad Gita, Arjun. At the, in the first chapter, the whole thing is, is very dramatic. They're on a battlefield. You know the scene, and most of you know. And uh, this battle has been building, building, building for a long time. And just to simplify, it's like good versus evil, okay? It's dharma versus adharma, that's, that's, the, that's at stake. So Krishna is dharma personified, he's sitting on the chariot, he's taking the humble role of a chariot driver for his good friend Arjun. And Arjun uh, asked Krishna to go you know, between the two battles, people know the scene, and I want to see who's on the other side before we start the battle. And so suddenly, he has an existential crisis because he's the main warrior, the whole thing is ready to go, and he sees on the other side his beloved teacher, Dronacharya, his beloved you know, grandfather of all the, all the dynasty, Bhishma Dev, plus so many other relatives and friends. And he says, who needs it? He says, I don't want the kingdom. You know, he's, he's, more or less, he's been covered by Krishna a little bit to bring out the Gita. And uh, I'd rather go to the forest and, and, and just beg. Who needs this kingdom? It'll be soaked in the blood of the people who I love. I don't like it, you know. So after arguing with Krishna back and forth in the first chapter, and even the beginning of the second chapter, finally he comes to the point of realizing this is not going to solve my problem. I'm still trembling here. I've dropped my bowl, you know. So he surrenders. And he says, Karpan yadosho bhata sabhava prichamitram dharma samuda cheta. He says, I'm paralyzed here by... Uh, miserly weakness, which is, which is exactly against his nature as a powerful chatriya. And I don't know what dharma is. I don't know what the right thing to do is. I'm bewildered, which is a critical factor. So he says, now I'm accepting you as my guru, not my friend. You instruct me. I'll, now I am your shishya. And I surrender to prapanna. This, this prapanna means surrender. So Prabhupada analyzes, in the, I've heard lectures, and you know, it's standard. This word shishya is very important. Good all disciples, you know, it, 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 we try to be disciples of Srila Prabhupada. So he wants to be now a disciple of, of Krishna, not just, not a friend. Friends are equal. They can argue back and forth from here to eternity. But disciple means that you accept what the guru says, and he's got the best guru, Krishna. So the word shishya is, is derived from this root, of the Sanskrit root shash, which means to be controlled. The word shastra and shastra, the long and short A's are very important. Shastra and shastra. Shastra we know is scripture, like Bhagavad Gita. Shastra is a weapon. A stick. A, a, a stick, or any other kind of weapon by which you could be controlled. And shishya means a disciple who agrees to be controlled by the words of the guru. So the idea is that Arjun is, is giving up what he wants and what he thinks and he's accepting the guidance of Krishna. And that's what this, this whole movement is based on. We have our own ideas of how to approach Krishna, how to approach God, what I want, what I don't want, like that. that that's the first, that's the first uh, uh, element of surrender, to say, I don't know. I'm, uh, you know. I don't know what's best for me. Another good example is Sanatana Goswami approaching Lord Chaitanya. Again, the disciple approaching the Supreme Person in this form of Lord Chaitanya. Why am I suffering? Who am I? They, th they say I'm very learned, but if I can't answer these questions, what's the use of my knowledge? So this is the, the means of approach, is first through the, through, the, through the knowledgeable person. 
Oftentimes, you know, the best means of approach is opening one of Prabhupada's books. That's always good. You're then uh, getting the, 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 the truth as it is. But oftentimes, it challenges our preconceptions. Of course, it will, 100% of the time. But that the surrender begins there. We're saying, okay, it's like this. Now let me find out if this, how this is true. Let me associate. Let me try to take on the process. So that's what we're talking about here. We, it, it's not, it's not, this is a formula you know, that's very, very deep. And it's based on humility. And the first act of that humility is admitting, I, I really don't know how I can pro progress toward perfection. So let me approach the source of real knowledge. Hare Krishna. You did fantastic. You, keep, <laughs> you, you should just stay here. <laughs> uh, uh -oh. Any other, one more question from anyone? Okay. Uh, can you please elaborate more about protection, what really protection means here? Sure, we talked about it, and you can listen to the recording of what we talked about. Okay. That's part of your protection. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> but um, what we, what, what, well, just to, a little review. Protection doesn't mean you'll never stub your toe, you never have a headache. You never get old, you'll never die, your wife will never talk back to you. <laughs> That's it, I can take the other one. <laughs> She's laughing. <laughs> Doesn't mean Krishna will protect you from those things. But it means, you know, your relationship with Krishna will be protected. Your spiritual development will, will be eternally under Krishna's protection. And for what will help you advance further on that progress towards Krishna, if you take the position of taking shelter of Krishna, he'll arrange for things that may look like a challenge or something difficult or something very nice or combination or mixture or whatever it is that helps you come to him. And Krishna says that. That's what protection is. That, that step by step. Dadami budiyogam tam. You know the verse. Yena mam upiyanti te. That which will help you come to him, Krishna will provide that. That's his, he'll help you come to him. That kind of protection. So it may mean um, you have a car accident. May mean you, you know, happened to me, you know, one of my knees went out of whack. That doesn't mean, you know, Krishna didn't protect me because one of my knees went out of whack. It's just that's part of what happens when I get a material body to remind me it, this is temporary and it's all going to break down. So, you know, a little bit or all, all at once it's going to break down. Let me not take shelter of that temporary, let me take shelter. So Krishna gives that intelligence. That's his protection, how to come to him. And it may mean, you know, the car accident that should, should have happened didn't happen. Or like there's two devotees in the audience here. You, you remember that last snowstorm in November before Thanksgiving? They were coming to visit in Chicago and the car flipped over. And there they were dangling upside down with their seatbelts on, looking down at the ceiling of the car, totaled, saying, are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> Krishna protected them. But, you know, the protection may come in that way or some other way. Maybe no accident. Maybe something else or something else. But the, so the protection doesn't necessarily mean there's no danger in the material world. There's danger in the material world. But your, the integrity of your relationship with Krishna will be protected. And Krishna will give intelligence through the surrendered soul how to make your way to, to Him, step after step. So we're going to end there and let you all go and take prasadam. 
another very nice activity in Krishna consciousness. Srila Prabhupada, Finishing quick. Come on, we'll do kids and honey. We can, honey, we can take a uh, little picture. Hare Krishna Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani 